Listen to this Shark Tank host, Kevin O'Leary, not holding back his thoughts on New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's a great politician. Let's celebrate that. Is she a bad manager? 100% she's terrible. They're both true. They so if both she was true. a business, I wouldn't hit that. You, would, you, would you pass? Would she, would, no, on let, Shark Tank, would she be, be specific. a specific. Yeah. I wouldn't let her manage a candy store. Wow. Marty Dolan is challenging AOC in the New York Democratic primary on June 25th, and he joins me now. Marty, good morning to you. Good morning. Not even a candy store, let alone Congress. What do you think about those comments? He's Mr. Wonderful, and uh, I'd like to take Mr. Wonderful to meet the wonderful people of the Bronx and Queens. He, he's not only right about that, but I think the impact of AOC's really terrible leadership is, is, is much worse than one candy store. Because now if you're a business and you're trying to, let's say you're gonna put a, uh, a plant in Queens, well, you're gonna think twice about that. Let's say you're BMW and you're gonna put a plant somewhere in the United States, maybe at a plant or an office, well, you're gonna think twice about that. And then you're gonna say, no, I'm gonna go to Greenville, South Carolina, where it's pro-business. So if you're not pro-business, it isn't just that you're a bad manager or a bad leader, you're, you're bad for the community yeah. in general. Well, that reminds me of the thing with Amazon. Remember when she didn't want the Amazon headquarters in her district and then she, that was scrapped and people said, man, that could have been my job. You know, it's worse than that because the whole theory when you talk about equal uh, pay for women, equal pay for you know the, the blacks and the whites is you have to have a path to a job. So let's say your dad is working at the Amazon facility in Queens and you're maybe you're a 12 year old or you're a 14 year old. Well, you say, I can have a better job at that facility. That, that's how it works at LaGuardia Airport in Queens is that you know, the people working there, well, the people that know them, mm -hmm. they go in and get the jobs because they, they can see the path to it. But if you're looking at an empty lot and there's no job, there's no plant, you know, you can't you can't see the path to get the job. Yeah. Well, tell us about New York's 14th district. You don't live there now, but you say that you're moving there soon. Um, what is it like there, and what are the people saying? So we just got through petitioning. So you got to get your petition signed to get on the ballot. We are officially on the ballot. In two and a half weeks, we got 7,300 signatures. I must have met at least five or 600 people from the Bronx and Queens. We only met one who said, you know, I'm good. The other people were like, this is great. We're going to have a choice. Uh, the key thing in a democracy is you have to have choice. You want to have abundant choices. You want to have abundant choices for jobs. Everybody says, we need more good candidates. And that's really what I'm trying to do is get out there and be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. I think the policies of AOC, as uh, Mr. Wonderful pointed out, they're really very selfishly di directed for her benefit, for her fame, but they don't get into the district. In fact, if you talk about the Green New Deal, you really talk about something that's going to put cost onto the people in the district to replace their heaters, which maybe they don't need to do right now. Maybe they could do it over time, but the law, local law 97, means you have to replace your heater tomorrow. Yeah. All because, you know, the Green New Deal. Right, right, right. Okay, so speaking of policies, here's a quote from you. You say the impact of progressive policies in New York City is obvious. Bail reform is a disaster. The National Guard in the subway. Toothpaste locked up in drugstores, yeah. but criminals running free. Scarce resources directed to non-sanctuary immigrants coming from all over the world. Are you sure you're not a Republican? <laughs> no, I'm a moderate Democrat. The Democrats used to be for unions, for protecting people who had jobs. Uh, my dad's from uh, Argentina. So anybody... Yeah, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So uh, my dad came up from Argentina. And he left as a refugee from the Perón dictatorship. Um, we were nine of us, nine brothers and sisters, wow. and my mom and dad in two-bedroom house. So uh, we didn't get any help from anybody, just from the local community as, as it was. But the people from Latin America understand what's going on here. This is like if you're trying to turn the United States into Venezuela, which was this great big socialist experiment for the last six years. This is Bernie Sanders and AOC trying to turn the United States into Venezuela. Now, we've seen it before. We know where it goes. And normally when the Republicans call Democrats, you know, socialists, it's, it's a bit of a broad tag. But these are socialists. Yeah, yeah. These are actually declare they themselves. They call themselves that, exactly. yes. And you're right to bring up um, 
your Hispanic background. This is a district that is, has a heavy Hispanic population, um, and many Hispanics are very concerned about uh, the past when you talked about Cuban migrants and, and socialism there. So it will be interesting uh, to watch your campaign. You say 7,000 signatures in two weeks. 7,000 signatures. And people want a choice. They want a and choice. And you are offering that. Yep. Marty, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Us. Waking up early. Have a great yep. day. Great to meet you. You too. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.